Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's February 6, 2020 meeting. As my fellow selectmen have reminded me, you have eight days to Valentine's Day? <laughs> February 14th. Well done. Eight days. So those of you who celebrate, <laughs> there's still time. Kate well, and I, in yeah, honor of Valentine's, Valentine's Day today, well, are dressed appropriately. Maybe, Kate. Right, yeah. right. So yeah. the first item of business, a citizen's comments. Do we have any citizen's comments this evening? Mr. Rapetti? Oh. Any comments, citizen's comments? Uh, <laughs> Whatever you like. Apparently not. <laughs> All right. Later. There being none, we will move to item 1.1 on the agenda. And that is Mark Walter. And would you come forward to the table? And you're going to talk to us about the Harvest Ride for Respite 2020? Yes. Okay. Uh, so oh. thank you for your time and giving me the opportunity to come here before you. Um, my name is Mark Walter. I'm a resident of Westwood. And um, I am working with the Michael Lisnow Respite Center, which is based in Hopkinton, on the uh, development of this inaugural Harvest Ride for Respite. It's a wow. charity bike ride uh, that will take place on Saturday, September 26th. And uh, there are three ride distances, uh, 27, 50, and 100 miles, and the 100-mile wow. ride will come through Dover. Okay. So I'm here to ask for the uh, selectman's approval uh, for that to take place. I have been in uh, contact with the chief and shared with him the uh, route, um, which uh, hopefully you all have copies of, but I can certainly talk you through uh, the 10 miles of roads, essentially, that uh, will come through Dover. Right. You know, it might be good for the people listening. Sure, you can absolutely. just go through it so, uh, quickly. So it, it, the ride, um, as I mentioned, comes about uh, 10 miles uh, of Dover Roads. Um, in between about mile 57 and mile 74. So what's happening is it's coming in and going out and coming okay. in and going out. So it, it comes into Dover from Medfield uh, along Pine Street, which is uh, basically mile 57. Uh, cyclists will continue on Pine Street, go right on Center, go up Walpole Street, and then make a left onto uh, Powissett Street and right into Westfield. Uh, cyclists will re-enter Dover along Westfield Street. Okay. Uh, turn right on Chestnut Street, right into Needham. Uh, they will then re-enter Dover from Needham along Central Avenue, and turn right on Claybrook, right on Main Street, left on Dover Road, ride back into Natick, uh, they will then come back into Dover along Glen Street, uh, to turn right on Farm, turn right on Bridge Street, and then ride into Sherborne. Pretty ride. Yes. Great. Right. Yes. Right. Very pretty. Uh, so uh, that the course we are in the process of getting ready to launch this. Okay. Seeking all the approvals is uh, you know part of the process, but once we do, course maps will be available. So anybody that you know is, didn't catch all of that that I just rattled off. Uh, will certainly be available in the public domain. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, uh, the first year for the event. Um, and, uh, you know, our expectations for this first year event for the 100 mile ride is it may only be 25 to 75 riders. So okay. nothing like the PMC, which comes through town. Um, certainly, I hope the numbers will be higher. And, um, you know, if that were the case, I'd certainly let the chief know if, you know, all of a sudden we were, you know, right. knocking it out of the park. But I think it's this is a reasonable estimate. Mm -hmm. And um, the expectation based on the start time is these riders will be coming through between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Okay. So it's not a lot of riders. They'll be pretty spread out by the time they get there. So I don't think they'll be, you may not even notice it. Okay. Um, but uh, nonetheless, again, I have been in touch with uh, the chief of police. 
Um, and as we get closer, we'll talk about where we may or may not want to put some police details just to control traffic, depending okay. on what our numbers are looking like. And okay. that thing. Um, I should note, however, you know, uh, the riders are told to obey the rules of the road. So even if there is no police, they can't go blowing through stop signs. Right. Well, you know, we have Chief McGowan's approval yes, on it. Um, are you riding, Mr. Jeffries? I am not, but Mark is a C and yet. I mean, you, could tell, you could still recruit me between now and then, but right. Mark is a seasoned veteran of our rides. Okay. Of the time trials. Is, so, yeah. is this too long for you? <laughs> <laughs> See what I have to put yeah. in this. this is so, not yeah. Thank so, you for doing so this. So Mark, can you, but, just, can you talk a little bit about the center? Sure. Let people know what it's all about, what it's for. Yes, uh, so the Michael Liz Now uh, Respite Center is, is based in Hopkinton. They've been around for uh, over 20 years, and essentially it's a home that provides uh, respite for families that have children with uh, physical and emotional disabilities. So it really gives them an opportunity to get a weekend, you know, a night out at the movies or whatever by being able to leave their child there at the respite center and they take great care of them. They keep, you know, take them out on trips. Some of them are, they work with some of the older kids on, you know, finding life skills and, you know, ways to, um, you know, uh, be contributing members of society. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's a pretty phenomenal work. Um, Michael is now, who was, uh, is the son of Sharon is now, who started it. Um, they, there's, um, I forget, I'm just new working with them, so I don't have the full detail, but I know they're right up the street here in Sherborne, hmm. there's the Michael Isdow uh, Meditation Center, or at one of the schools, Meditation Garden. Okay. Uh, so they have a strong connection to the Dover Sherborne area, because hmm. um, uh, I think maybe that's where uh, the, the Lisnow lived. Okay. Um, but anyway, Michael passed away many years ago, and Sharon, you know, moved on to establish this home, which, uh, it's just you know provide a lot of great relief for a lot of families how did you get involved with it uh so i have um one of the members of the respite center has uh, participated in some of my events so i also um i own sun multi-sport events so i also okay. own triathlons uh and okay. running events you may, my name may sound familiar because i also organize the Pawisset farm trail run Oh, okay. Uh, which we do twice a year, right. and you'll probably be seeing my name soon because I'm about to begin initiate that approval process. Okay. Um, but so, so um, uh, Dan over at the Respite Center was familiar with me and my events, so he reached out to say, to say, "Hey, we're thinking about putting on this ride. Would you be able to help?" So um, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So I have no further questions. No, terrific. Thank do you. you. No. Sure. Thank All you. right. So then I move to approve the Harvest Ride for Respite 2020 on September 26, 2020. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Well, thank Perfect. you very much. Thank you. Thank very you. informative thank you. presentation. Yeah, good luck. Thank you again. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Would you like to come oh, up, I Mr. Rapetti? Right, <laughs> right. It's not the hot seat. It is the hot seat. We put, made sure it was a little electrified. Right? Okay, be uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, thank you. Would you like to <laughs> take Mr. Rapetti? Would you like to take your coat <laughs> off and yeah, stay yeah, a while? Sure. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, so the next, so this item of business is um, to discuss the order and. Uh, and assign the 2020 town meeting warrant. Right. Yeah, I, I, um, Is I that was, time already? <laughs> <laughs> it's an ambitious um, warrant. Right. And um, I have a, a couple of concerns that I just wanted to mention to you so that you can start thinking about the ordering. One is to what extent are some of these articles going to be controversial in that they'll involve a fair amount of debate. Right. And the reason that I would like to have some thought ahead of time with respect to that is if it turns out that we're going to have to move to a second session, continue, have a continuance from our first town meeting to a subsequent town meeting, I'd like to be able to make that call fairly early in the evening. You may recall okay. a couple of years ago, at the last minute, I reshuffled some of the Warren articles so that I could make a determination earlier rather than later whether we would have to go to a second evening. Instead of reshuffling during the meeting, I thought if we could think about it now, 
and I recognize that it may take a, a, a few weeks for us to be able to assimilate all the information that we're going to need to make an informed decision. But um, so that was concern number one. To what extent can we expect extended debate? Just eyeballing this, I, I was thinking maybe free cash and cash reserves may involve um, some extended debate. Um, the uh, Board of Health Chapter 40U may entail a, a, a significant amount of discussion as well. And, and number 23 as well, the, right. the water use right. restriction bylaw. Exactly. Um, the Historical Commission demolition review, in the past when that has been considered, there was a fairly significant right. amount of discussion. Um, and then we have the citizens' petitions as well, which I think may also engender a fair amount of discussion. So and 32 and 33. Right, 30, you're right, uh, 32 and 33 uh, with respect to the buses. So that was issue number one, just to start thinking about which of these w do we think would involve the most discussion and perhaps have them earlier in the meeting so that we could then make a call about what we want to do for continuing the meeting to a subsequent date. And then secondly, um, you know, it always is a concern about the ability to draw and keep younger families at the meeting because of childcare right. concerns. And um, I had a conversation yesterday with Carissa on the phone and I suggested she contact and, and you. And she did, and I, that was an excellent suggestion because I wasn't even thinking about that. So she said they were meeting this evening and then right. she would get back to me. Right. You know, I explained, I explained to her that um, my role is really to make sure that it's a fair proceeding right. and that nobody's blindsided by procedure. And um, I explained that I expected that they might want to have their articles cons considered earlier in the meeting so that they could get back home and relieve the babysitters or the spouse who stayed home to take care of the children, but I also explained there's a motion for reconsideration right. that has often been used in the past, so, so that they, it's a difficult strategic decision for them in terms of their ability to uh, have everybody they want at the meeting and also to be able to ensure that whatever action is taken one way or the other is retained um, if there's a motion for reconsideration. So um, uh, I suggested that she talk to uh, Robin and also that they think about what they wanted to do so that when you're finally deciding on the ordering, you can take their desires into account in, in <coughs> setting up the final warrant sequence of events. Right. So you notice how I'm very nicely just handing this well, off I, to you. <laughs> I did hand her to you initially because I said... Right back at you. Right, because I recognize that technique, Jim. <laughs> That's why you get paid the big bucks. Right, right. You know, Chris and I have spent a lot of time explaining the process to them yep. because, you know, we said to them that it's our responsibility to make sure that citizens understand what the process is. Right. And um, we suggested she reach out to you. We also right. suggested that there was a lot of, um, they needed to get, you know, out what they were trying to do. Right. So there was a lot of education that needed to take place. Yeah. And we mentioned a few times the easiest thing was getting it on the warrant. Yeah. And yeah, so, I, I, I so I'm glad she. I'm glad she reached out because we did say you know there's a lot of work. There there are also nuances with this because we, the board, right, and the town, we really have no jurisdiction over school committee policy, right. and this is a policy decision. Yeah. So we did explain that there could be a scenario where the town approves additional funding, but the school committee doesn't right. accept the funding, right. and then there's nothing that can be done. So we did, we've explained that to them numerous times, and we did encourage them to keep talking to the school committee to t try and reach um, a mutually acceptable right. um, agreement. It's good advice. Right. You know, and I have talked to the school committee as well about I've kept both sides, you know, abreast of what's going on, and I said they cannot take, you know, 
it we're doing our job it's not it, this isn't a sign of, of whether or not we support what they're trying to do what we support is allowing citizens to to have their due process right. so to speak right. but Very they good. but they needed to understand that yeah. nothing might come of this I mean we, we just have no control over it right okay how do you make that determination in, in the you, in the context as Madam Chairman just explained, we still need we, we have a limited amount of time. We have a limit. We have a lot of, of a lot of articles on the warrant. Potentially, and because some of these may come off. Potentially, make more. potentially. Right. Make more. but the cost of having a second day is significant. Oh yeah. The cost of doing all this twice right. is a burden, and as we have we have explained as a board to the petitioners, it quite possibly could be for nothing. Right. right. So we we would be incurring a cost yeah. if this has to go to a second day. Um, that may be a significant waste. So I, I, I would be mindful of that as during the procedures. And I know that's hard for you to do and hard in your capacity to, to be able to be sensitive to all of those things. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, as you know, we, we have limited proponents of Article 8 minutes, and I explained that to Carissa. I also explained we have a two-minute limit for uh, comments from the floor, right. which, by the way, after the last town meeting, my neighbor told me she thought it was a terrible idea. <laughs> But, um, I, I thought it was gonna, a good idea but, because people because people just tend to repeat themselves. Yeah, right. and so I try to explain you, that, right. but I but I think that you know we can expect a little bit of pushback, but we will adhere to that because it's important to try to get people out at a reasonable hour. One of the questions that I also had for you is that given that statutorily this is primarily within the purview of the school committee, to what extent does the general budget? approval for funding of the schools indirectly allow that to be uh, a topic for town meeting you know generally we would think that if it's not if it's outside the purview of the town then um, it's not appropriate for town meeting discussion but in this case and I am not an expert on the school so I'm looking to you all and, and Nina for guidance about this um, it's, it seems to me that there is a town meeting um, subject matter jurisdiction because of our approval of the general budget. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that additional buses, for example, would require additional expenditures on the part of the town, that it seems to me, therefore, it is an appropriate topic for discussion at town meeting. But I also wanted to mention that because I, I, it's, it is an issue on the radar screen that I think that you all should think about it and consult with Nina about it. Chris, you may have already focused on this, so. I'll let Chris talk, but prior to engaging them in conversation, we reached out to Nina to okay. understand um, what our responsibility was as a okay. town. And Chris can fill you in. Sure. Yeah, council has opined that these two articles are permissible for okay. town meeting. Okay, uh, That they can make an appropriation but going back to the chairman's comments earlier, uh, and if, if an appropriation is made, it still requires an acceptance and vote right. by the school committee to actually expend. So there could be a scenario where money is set aside, it sits there for the whole year, school committee says, no, we're sticking right. with the plan, right. and it just rolls out to free cash the following year. Right. Do you fellas have any ideas which of these Warren articles are going to be the most controversial? Because in a perfect world, I would want them to come early rather than late so that we can make a decision about. Right. I, I think if we took a vote, we'd probably all be wrong. But <laughs> right. we have, this is a buffet. Yeah. <laughs> we did our I think, I think <laughs> all the ones you highlighted right. are, are, are the correct ones. Are the correct correct. ones. Okay. Yeah. Although, what about what, which the hail reservation restriction? That could be, but, well, it but it's going to be are. more informational, right? The hail process is, is, a, is a very low dollar ask okay. and it's much more of a at this point an informational setting the table for right. what is most okay. likely going to come in the future but to get to the next step this is something that needs to be done 
Okay. So, but it is a very small dollar amount. I, I could see because I'm already have people have reached out about the MGL Chapter 4 to you that I, I th that is going to be I think there's going to be a lot of discussion and, and I personally think the water use restriction bylaw is going to also there will be a lot of discussion around that and the school age parents the, the start time right. is going to be an issue so I think all four of those right. are going to solicit a lot of conversation you know, so we so so we have talked about, and I know there was that special group you had put together to try and um, make town meeting move more smoothly, right. smoothly, and be more efficient. Um, is there? Can we take some of these? Um, I don't even know if it's possible, but it's what we do with our agenda now. Are, can we take some of these lesser and? Bundle them into yeah, a consent sure. agenda yeah. to try and speed because even though no, nobody's going to be have anything to say against these, it right. still takes time to go through the process. Right. I mean, I was yeah, I was looking at this and with thirty-five articles, if, even if we spend just two minutes right. per article, right? Right. I was doing the, the same thing. Right. In Seventy minutes. Right. Right. There. right. Yeah, I, I I think that's a great idea, Robin, and I wanted to talk to Chris about. Um, Figuring out which of these we could bundle, you know, for example, um, the sick leave and some of the other, the, the sort of routine, small yes, yes, items. Right. They're important items, but they're there are small appropriations. Um, it's routinely passed at every town meeting. I was hoping that maybe we'd be able to bundle a series of these. And I know Nina had suggested that in the past as something that she's seen in other towns. So that would be one way that we could. Um, to try to, to shorten the discussion yeah, to the extent we can bundle uh, as many of these as possible. Sure, so you, sh you shrink the ones that are routine right, right. and you allow more time for the ones that right, people... Right, be because you know, that's, that's what we should be discussing right. at town meeting. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, I think we should definitely plan on doing that and, um, and also plan on uh, trying to figure out this, the sequence right. of the controversial. Right potentially controversial articles. Right. What's the drop dead date for the sequence? Next, our next meeting. 28th, what is it? The 28th, you'll 28th. sign the warrant. Okay. Because that, you know, if you could wait until after the open hearing, then you usually, mm -hmm. right. that really gives you a sense, but we mm -hmm. have in the past reordered things after the open hearing. I mean, you can reorder if the right. moderator chooses day of. And I, I, I'll do, you know, if you all think that's prudent, I'm, I'm happy to do that. We have done it in the past. Right. I mean, we can um, try and guess now, and if we're wrong, right. we can. Right. Well, maybe, well, maybe it makes sense to see if we can bundle, get that thing sort of teed up. Yeah. And then we can, between now and the 28th, <laughs> take our own sort of right. guesses at what might be. But I, again, <clears throat> I think that, Jim, I think you hit it I think on you the identified head, you know. all of them. Right. It's, it's going to be an interesting meeting. And, 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 and just one other thought, you know, with respect to the citizens' petitions, um, I think that given that it is a citizen petition, we should try to be more, you know, as accommodating as possible for what would be helpful to them. But, right, which is, you know, which is why we've, we've right. really, you know, we've explained the process, right. we've explained the pros and cons to what they're trying to do. Right. We, you know, we had to have them amend some of the articles because the traffic study, they, they wanted to do some things that you couldn't right. do, but we told them that they had a lot of work that they needed to do. And the example we gave them was the first time the plastic bags didn't pass because, right. you know, procedures weren't followed. So right. we're telling you these things because we want you to know what has to happen. Yeah, I, I think you've done very well. And, um, and uh, I think they, you know, from my conversation with them last night, they seemed very well informed. So okay, good. Okay. So I think you did a great job. If I could just add, Madam Chair. Um, you can always just as add. It relates, <laughs> as it relates to the conversation. What did I screw up now? Uh, no, nothing at all. Uh, I just wanted to make mention that nothing is, there have been no official votes that I'm aware of, but I have heard um, that 
both 22, so that 22 may be withdrawn. Okay. Um, but again, I just, you know, okay. I have no official votes by the sponsor, but that is, that is what I've heard, that that may be withdrawn. And secondly, Article 23, as it relates to water use restriction bylaw, two things there. I was notified this afternoon um, by, uh, by the proponent, the chair, um, that they are looking to the Board of Selectmen to make a determination on whether or not the board wants to move forward or recommend moving forward with this article. Um, so the board could discuss and vote on that this evening, um, or we can continue the dialogue to the next meeting. I'm not sure I'm in a position. Yeah, I'd have but, to look at the, right. I'd have to actually look and, and uh, right. I don't think there's anything in place other than a concept right. of yeah, a so water use restriction bylaw based on the commentary we heard from colonial water a few months back about water usage during the summertime. Right. Yeah, and that, that requires a fair amount of discussion because my understanding was with the way the information was presented at that meeting, I mean, it, 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 the thing spikes in the summertime from people watering their lawn. I'm not quite sure what, what and they were at a loss to explain what they could do about it. So well, that, that was a big question, how, so you have, right, what's, what's enforcement? Yeah, and so I, I don't know how that gets resolved. Right. And I don't know what's in here, so I need to understand that. <laughs> sure. So that may be, you know, more education, and that may be a reason to table it for this town yeah, meeting. Yeah, because I also right. thought that their water usage overall, if you just did the whole year, was okay. It flattens out. Correct. Right. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, so that's what I walked away with, and I thought this was premature. Chris, in that regard, um, also Article 22, if I remember correctly, there was a question last time about whether Chapter 40U was a source of authority for the action that was being requested. Um, oh, I remember that, right. Yeah. And um, so I think, again, this goes to whether it's within the purview of town meeting, um, because it, it, would, it would not be helpful for us to approve a bylaw that's then struck down by the Attorney General's <laughs> office. Uh, it would, it's a waste of time, frankly. Um, so maybe if we could consult with town council about whether 40U in fact authorizes the action that's being requested, that would be helpful. I, uh, yes, sir, a meeting with council on Monday about all things generally warrant, and this is an article of uh, a topic of discussion. Okay, great, thank you. And yep. Jim, maybe I'll, you know, maybe you and I can get together the next week or so. You know, there are consolidation opportunities, but to kind of put something that. together and then come back the next okay. time. Super, thank you. You know, the, the other thing, um, Chris, that I'm a little bit nervous about is that if it turns out that it is outside the scope of the authority of 40U, then technically it's an ultra virus motion. And I'll have to face a decision about whether I roll it out of order or not at the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, um, it would be very helpful if we have the opinion of council. Okay. Um, okay. And feel free to, I'll reach out to you, but you could join me on Monday too if you'd like. Um, I'll have to I'll check my calendar. I might be out of town, but you know, that'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> That's another excuse I often use. <laughs> I feel like the uh, phantom traveler. Uh, exactly. <laughs> hmm. Well, yeah. I'm glad we we're having this this discussion now early. So. Yeah, and thank you, uh, thank you for uh, listening, and also thank you for all the work you do. It's a tough job. It's right so back thanks. at you. Yeah. All the work you do. So. No, I, my job is easy. That's why John to, gets the big bucks. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> My first town meeting when the um, when I was reading the budget lines, and I got to moderator, and I said zero. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I told the town, "You get what you pay for." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was still stands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. We'll see you now. Well done. Bye bye. Thank you. Um, two other points, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, just as it relates to the warrant. Um, uh, so one in your packet is some supplemental information related to some of the, uh, the new articles that you see this year. Um, senior tax release 
relief, excuse me, the cemetery commission bylaw changes. So there's some supplemental information in there that I'll continue to insert as we receive it. Okay. Um, the other that you should be aware of is that we're working to schedule many of these um, articles to be presented to the board in the coming weeks. So at our next meeting, there'll be a presentation from uh, members of the Hale Task Force who want to come and present oh, their, their recommendation. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, um, that's, that's great. Um, okay. Also on the 27th, we'll be, a, uh, I'll provide you with a budget update that will cover many of the financial okay. related articles that you see here. Um, in addition, um, the solar articles as we continue that effort and uh, if and when we get to a point, we'll come back before the board with okay. an update on where we've been. And uh, uh, the schools, the citizen petitions, the petitioner uh, will also be coming before the board at okay. some point. We're just working on a schedule with the petitioner. Um, so you'll have an opportunity to hear from many of the petitioners as well as some background right. information on these uh, pretty early on. I think that's great. Now, in the budget presentation, will it be all encompassing? So we'll, we'll have everything that we know of today. I will. It will be everything that we know of today. Okay. Yes. Yep. Will we put placeholders in for things we don't know and kind of guesstimate those? So I'll we'll I'll, I'll, I will identify okay. those. Right. But I have received all. I received all departmental budgets, including non-board uh, non selectmen departments. Um, so unless anything has changed since okay, they've been right. submitted, it reflects what we're looking okay. at. Now, when do we get the final health care rates, Jerry? Uh, we're due to set the rates at the February 29th. Okay, evening. so we'll be after that. All right. And I can highlight, maybe I'll have an assessment slide that lets you know what assessments we've actually received and what we're still waiting right. on with the, uh, okay, with the that, estimated. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Is that late, or is it usually the end of February? Yeah, it's about on, on schedule. Okay. For some They've gone into March, so. Okay, because for some reason I had in my mind the middle of February, but <coughs> must be all this Valentine's Day conversation. All right, that will be really helpful. Completed 1.3? Yes. No, 1.2. So 1.4. Three is to um, approve the ambulance rates. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take the hot seat or not? <laughs> so um, ambulance rates, it's that type of year again. We usually do them about now. And um, basically, I just need to know what uh, you folks want to do. So you have to remind us what we've done in the well, past. Well, in, in the, in the <laughs> past, what they've said. <laughs> in the yes. past, it's we want to make sure our rate is at least. Um, it's coming back to me now. One hundred and ten percent of the Medicare, Medicare rate, right. which is on the low side, and we are over that target. If you want to change that target, we can obviously, you know, adjust the rates accordingly. But. So how did that? How did that policy get set? Back in the mists of ancient times, it was <laughs> here before I got here. It was in the memos that I found when I arrived. So, and what do other towns do? Well, um, do you have the page from Comstar? Yes, I do. So they show you what the average of their top fifty. They have about two hundred municipal clients, and so the top fifty of them—that's the average of their rates. Okay. So it, even if we, for example, doubled our rates, we wouldn't be in the top 50. Right. Or we'd be at the bottom, you know. So. What do they mean by bundled, average so bundled? So it used to be four or five years ago, it was like a Chinese menu. You had, you know, oxygen, medication, okay. everything was broken out and there was a charge for every little thing. Like the hospital so the, the way The way um, ambulance billing has moved and Comstar, our company that handles it for us, has moved us there, is that it's now an all-inclusive, all-one. The only difference is really, is it basic life support, which is what Dover's Ambulance offers, or advanced life support with paramedics that we either get you know, from out of town. Or okay. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the top 25 of 
right? If this top if 50. Top so 50. Is the average well, 200, top 50. right? If there's yeah, 200 so companies, it'd be, it'd be the top 25 percent that they Yeah, have the top be. quarter. Not median. Right. No. All right, so I, I, so I would be interested, not, not for this particular one, well, maybe these, my colleagues would like to be, I'm interested in looking at the median that is charged and then comparing the median to what we did and trying to, and trying to understand what, what, is this, what, what the rationale would be. What's the rationale? I mean, something steeped in the history, which many things seem to be, needs to be at least rethought. So, from a mathematical standpoint, because yep. it's probably easier just to put it into an equation versus to sort of to give Jerry a task to Jeff. come back, right? If we're 110% historically of the Medicare amount, yep. and we're um, and we're 30%, right? 32% based upon these numbers of the top 25. The top yeah. 50. The top 50. Right. Yep. Okay. So out of two hundred. Out of two hundred. From a if you if you then drew what our average could be from where we are to where they are, and then what would what do other towns what would other towns do? Right? Well, how many other towns would right. be in Median that and range? Mode. Median and mode, right? Yeah. And, and you'd you'd probably find out that um, Seventy-five percent of the towns are below that, between our rate and the average, and twenty-five percent are above, right? And that number is going to be about eight hundred dollars ballpark, some for the for basic life support, and maybe two thousand three hundred dollars for advanced life support, somewhere in that range. So I'm looking for a rationale. Right. So the rationale would be why, where do we want to be? Right. Where do we and want to what be? Are like communities do. And what's the probability of us actually receiving a bill, the dollar amount for that bill? That's the other side of the equa equation, correct? Yeah. We um, bill it, how much do we actually get paid? Then that, that's going to be, I can see if Comstar can give us some idea of what, certainly, Anybody that's on Medicare, you get the Medicare rate, and anything over that gets written off. Right. right. Um, on the other end, the people that didn't have insurance and haven't paid the bill, when it's six hundred dollars, aren't going to pay the bill when, when it's twelve hundred. Twelve hundred dollars. Exactly. You'll be right. You'll definitely be writing more off. Yep. Exactly. We're in that middle. You know, you obviously there are probably insurance companies that are willing to pay more than five hundred dollars. You know, how much more? Um, I can see if Comstar can give me any sort of feel yeah. for. Did, we, we, I, I don't think it's anybody's um, request to, to try to establish numbers that are unrealistic to be billed and wouldn't matter because right. of right. the exactly. probability of being. Rationale. What rationale. is our rationale for doing this? Right. That's so, what I'd like to understand. So, my get, so I'm thinking that potentially it was that most ambulance calls these individuals are on um, Medicare that that's my guess but that may because, have changed because, right because you know, there's probably because there's probably a um, I, I bet if you looked at calls I bet I, you know a this is big, way beyond <laughs> right so <laughs> that's, beyond so that's, yeah, what, I'm, so that's can, what I'm thinking tell you so that's why the, so that's why they pegged the um, the Medicare rate and decided to just so give a little we, bit of a premium over so that. Can we ask Jerry to do a little work and come yeah. on a 28? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so my guess is, Jerry, that, that there's a lot of the a lot of the trips that they're basic life support trips, and if they're if they're facility to facility type trips, which are probably none of our our ambulance doesn't do facility to facility transfers. We do we are doing basic life support transfers, and. Um, so that it's going to be a very narrow uh, group of numbers that we have to pull from. And then our, our, I think our task is going to be what's a reasonable amount to build and what's a reasonable expectation to be received, received from that bill. Right, yes. right? Well, and again, so, these, other, you know, these other towns are charging more. 
apparently charging higher. Right. And we're, but we don't know what their rights are. We don't know what they're getting, right. what they're writing off. What they're writing, exactly. So you, you would, you'll find that if a company, if a company, if a, if a municipality like Cambridge or um, some that, that does, it's doing a lot of higher end yeah. um, type of, of transports, they may be writing off a significant amount of their of their be good to know. Okay, here's my guess. We'll see. I pull <laughs> six hundred bucks. Do you, do you have it down? I'm putting my money. I'm but putting my money that. on six hundred dollars. I already gave you that number. <laughs> no, you didn't. Eight hundred is going to be. You're just going. You're taking fifty percent of the, the median. I am state. just okay. telling. Came up with six hundred dollars. Okay. That's mine. That's my number. Yeah. Is that all right, Jerry? Would you Such like eight. to put a number yeah. out there? Yeah. John? Just, just, I, I wonder if this is this is televised, and I'm not sure we should be gambling. I'm not gambling. <laughs> it's gambling. just it's she just, just my back of the envelope. Her number. No, it's just oh, my em envelope. <laughs> it's my back <laughs> of the envelope calculation. It's not gambling. This would be great. All right, thank you, thank you, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry you. thanks. Yeah, okay. Seven, well, we have more. Seven hundred and twenty-two dollars. Now, now we have the flip side of the yeah. coin. Yeah, yep, right? now we have the flip side. The write-offs. The write-offs. <laughs> Five thousand, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the annual request for ambulance abatements. These are accounts that are at this stage uncollectible. Um, the smaller balance ones are typically insurance has made a payment, but there's a balance due from the patient, the patient right. and they haven't paid. And a lot, many of these cases, we can't find them. They, you know, right. they yeah. gave, they didn't give us an address. They gave a bad address. You know, it's 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 not locals, yeah. But um, and then the bigger ones were people that didn't give insurance and aren't respond either can't be reached by mail or aren't responding by mail. Okay. Um, right. And so forty, just over forty nine hundred this year. Right. So I'm going to move to approve the abatements of nine bills covering the period July 2016 through July 2017 in the amount of four thousand nine hundred and one dollars and eighteen cents. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. And this is the total, Jerry, right? This is our total. This is our total. Yeah, our total. This is after, you know, so like after insurance payments or any okay. insurance adjustments, this is what was still outstanding. And again, past practice has been let them go two and a half years. Yep. And if nothing happens in two and a half years, write them off. The second part of what we asked you earlier is, is really easy. All you'd have to do is just, just, just get the total number of rides. The total number of transfers that make up those numbers, and that will give you the the average of what the what each of our six hundred bucks. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> she's just so easy <laughs> to deal. With. Once she's made up her mind, it's just it's the CFO coming yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, thank you, Jerry. Have a nice evening. Very much. Yeah. Remember, the fourteenth is Valentine's. Valentine's. <laughs> Are we on time here? What are we doing? No. So now the next item of business is the discussion on the um, on the statement of work for the website services. Um, so before you is um, uh, is a website contract with a new website okay. vendor that we have um, discussed and reviewed over the past few months. The vendor is Civic Plus. Um, they provide, I'd say, about 85% of the Commonwealth's municipal websites um, uh, to the local municipalities. Um, and we are ready to move forward um, with the contract so we can begin our engagement with them. A few brief things I'd just like to highlight to the board is on page five of the Civic Plus proposal in your packet, um, lists uh, has a robust list of the additional modules that come with the website. So it's not just a website where people can go and access documents and, and find information, and hours of uh, offices and who's in on particular committees of boards, things like the alert center where you can post emergency important information to the website and automatically push notifications out to residents, um, a blog and a news section about upcoming events and things that are occurring, um, project-based 
um, efforts that are happening in town, a more robust calendar um, of all the events that are occurring in town that can be both official meetings like this one as well as general events like Dover Days and the Dover Tree Lighting. Um, the months have an extra couple of days in them too, it's just in case you need more time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing which is really nice, and this is really thinking toward the future, while it's not included at this point, um, the vendor has a, or the platform I should say, has a really robust e-payment center. So as we start to look toward bringing new systems into the community and modernizing the way we do business, we'll be able to allow residents to be able to pay a lot of their bills online so that they don't necessarily have to come into town hall um, if they don't want to, which is really great. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to highlight here that's important is that the platform allows for um, permission-based access um, so that we no longer have to have uh, one point of contact for everything related to the website that we will actually, we can and we will push down um, ownership of content um, to departments so that those departments are, will be updating it so that things are constantly being updated on a regular basis, a more frequent basis. Uh, and it helps with the sustainability of the site so that if uh, you know, I'm, the web, I'm the individual updating the website uh, and I'm not here tomorrow, you don't have to go through a whole new education mm -hmm. process. Um, so, so with that, like say, say for instance, the C of, C of A wants to remind people of a coffee they're having. Right. Can they post that themselves to the calendar? Uh, we, they can. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We'd likely do it via staff. Okay. Um, but all that can be worked out during the implementation phase. Right. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, and the other thing that I just wanted to highlight is um, the platform has a robust document management um, <laughs> component to it. Uh, so that as we talk about access to information uh, and looking for forms like ambulance runs, all of these things can be uploaded right. and presented and stored on the website and you can find them on their related pages such as the treasurer collector's department in the case for ambulance or in our fire department as well as an actual document repository that's indexed based on hierarchy so as well as other to drive or not? Uh, more, more robust, more robust than, than drive, than drive. Yep. <coughs> um, and the, <coughs> excuse me the benefit to that is you know much of what we do year day to day is public information right. information right. that the public wants and so that if you put it on the website it's hard to find well there it is for the external audience right. as well as the internal right. audience right. as well so everybody has it. so those are the three things that yeah. I really want to so Chris I know you have some you have some ex actual experience so the, the thing about do document management is search how was their search it's great it's, it's very much like a, it's like a Google search the search bar keyword search optimizes it Please find John. <laughs> Can I hide myself? Like, okay. Please try to look for me. Are there any more questions? Comments? You ready to go? I am. Let's go. All right. So I move to approve the statement of work for website services between Civic Plus and the town of Dover. I move to authorize the town administrator, Chris Stwelly, to execute any documents necessary in connection with Civic Plus. Second. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. This was the, we were waiting for this. We are very excited to get the website. I know it's, it's a while crawl. though, right? Fingers and toes crossed, please. So you'll like this, I think you'll like this next, uh, this okay. next agenda. Later. All right. Is it going to spend more money? Uh, no. It has technically already saved us money. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to move the discussion. <laughs> I know that line, too. <laughs> I am going to move the discussion over to Mr. Dwelly to talk to us about a website project manager. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's exactly that. Um, it. Uh, you know, as we look as we look at all the things that we want to accomplish um, in town, um, it's clear both given kind of our bandwidth as well as our robust agenda and the indication from the board as well as the resources that we've been provided via uh, town meeting for the technology funds uh, through that special article. Um, you know that we should be smartly engaging consultants to help us um, really execute these projects and set them up so that they are sustainable moving forward. Uh, and so in, in your packets is a proposal from uh, a firm called Take Forward 
um, who has um, extensive experience in project managing website uh, implementation projects and specifically with um, Civic, Civic Plus. Plus. Um, so this individual I have not directly done work with, um, but she has done, I know her from uh, her leading the project implementation recently in the towns of Falmouth and Sandwich. Um, and she um, did some pro bono work for me and for the community based on her experience with Civic Plus in reviewing the initial proposal and identified areas with the vendor that we could shave and cut, cut costs. So she was actually able to reduce the initial scope of work for the same exact services by $20,000 for us. For us. Um, for us, um, which is fantastic. Um, but beyond the money piece, um, website implementations, it's a, it's a heavy lift. Right. It it's truly a is a big, it's a, it's a big, job. big effort. And nobody has the, the, the time to dedicate. Anyone, you or Kate, could probably do it. You need, it needs to become your full-time job, right? Uh, Apparently they have full-time jobs. <laughs> I know, it's just so time-consuming. Well, Mona can do it, she does everything. <laughs> Mona only said, hey, no, I think Mona has a full-time job. No, but she just picks things up. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, Chris saying it's a heavy right. lift. It's a heavy it's, lift. It's a huge lift. Is it an hourly? Do we, would we be contracting on an hourly or would it be nope. project That's what the whole project What's really nice is they've quoted us um, on page, I believe it's three of the proposal here, um, a total flat cost dollar amount for the entire project implementation. Um, they have also committed to, Civic Plus has provided us with an aggressive schedule with an implementation uh, target date of two months. Wow. Um, and if we're gonna meet that two months, we're going to need this project manager right. in place. And they all, in the contract, they also provide a lot of support, so engage the, the company. Right? There they are do. lines in there. They do. Um, and so, so that's that, it is a heavy lift. That's the nice benefit. And so, you know, what's really great is, you know, Civic Plus in the Engage product, as we, you know, initially roll that out and implement that, they'll come on site and they'll provide some initial trainings. Um, but the additional benefit of a project manager yep. is that they'll really put together kind of that tailored training experience and be here after the website has gone out and has gone yep. and packed up right. to be able to yep. provide that continuous follow-up for folks yep. and also customize the experience that we want, like I talked about, about decentralizing, yep. um, updating the right. website. And yeah, it's so important I mean, that as you push it down that people are comfortable with, with their role well, in keeping the website we, up we to We understand. Date. I mean, we've right. spent a fair amount of time on TED. I mean, it's one of the things is, is implementation support, mm -hmm. um, training staff. It's, it's a big, that's another big lift that we have to, we have to get, be prepared to do well. How do we pay her? Uh, through the special article um, as it relates to technology. Okay. We still have plenty it's of not drive donuts. <laughs> I, I, I meant actual. How come she gets to make jokes and we can't? She's what? the chair. No, no. Good, answer. Good answer. Good uh, answer. So we. <laughs> what do you mean, like literally? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 We, we give her an envelope with money <laughs> in the back of the, in the back of the townhouse. I'm actually, I'm actually okay with all those methods. By the way. <laughs> Do we have to appropriate <laughs> any additional money? The no, town was kind not. enough, we John. Do not. At the last to town, do we do that. Right. Correct. And, so and, we can let and your is... constituents at home <laughs> right. know that there's no further yep. appropriation necessary. Right. That's but that wasn't the question you asked. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I so when she wants to be little, it's little. Right? <laughs> oh, Just I move. putting it out there. I am going to make a motion. All right. Can you handle it? Move to approve the Cape Forward proposal for the IT project management service. A move to authorize town administrator Christopher Dwelly to execute any documents necessary in connection with Cape Forward. So moved. Second. All in favor? Go ahead, second. What? Whatever. <laughs> Looking forward to it. This is going to be. Uh, this should be really exciting. This should yeah. be exciting. It's really great. Should. Yep. That's great. It's a big step. Well done. Yeah. Well, one, well done to everybody. Hey, getting closer. Right on target. Miss O'Brien, would you like to? Sure.
<laughs> talk to us about the um, town so report? This is the draft town report right. uh, for, from the Board of Selections Office. Um, Bob gave some changes uh, earlier yesterday. Um, and I've incorporated them, but I have two minor other changes I have. Okay. So I'll switch to the primer. Right. And, and I have I have a few nits, so okay, I'll send those sure. to you. Yeah. But I thought it was it was really good. It's amazing how much we've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe like a whole day. Going through the whole I, right, right. But I mean, there there was nothing. Yeah, we can, we can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just you know I was just surprised. We're going to reflect back. Yeah, it is a really good thing. Well, that's that's what it's been a great way to kind of. It was like I was here the whole year. Right. Yeah. Get, yeah. get, you know, <laughs> see what we were doing. Yeah. And right. It was a good uh, learning. Uh, Kate, so. if only you had been here for the whole year. <laughs> you would have ran away. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mona, Mona has, <laughs> Mona has a way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so go through your nits. I will send them. Oh, you're going to send them. Okay. Right. All right. Because I, I was actually, I was reading it on the train, so I'll send okay. it to you. Okay, great. And when I get those, I'll like, okay. forward it to the... Right. So can we and make a motion? And you can take, you don't have to take all my nuts, because some of it is just... You definitely do not have to take all right. of them. You, you know, I get really mad sometimes oh, at okay. people changing the... I, that, I never do. I never get mad. They are both lying. They are both lying. So you can... Both lying. So so, <laughs> So you can just, if you think it sounds better, okay. use it. If it doesn't, I'm okay with it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so would you like a move subject to... You're going to do this again? I'm just trying to help. Get into a roll. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to help. Yeah. Subject to edits? Well, no, because they're, they're, it's nothing substantive. It's little okay. nits here and there. So, yeah. Move to approve the 2019 Selectman's Town Report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Well done, Kate. She holds grudges if you edit her work. No, it's not John, John, John. We don't call her the grumpy editor for nothing. Right. Right. Surplus items. <laughs> <laughs> I have two of them next to me. How do I dispose of them? You can put them on the uh, <laughs> 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 surplus <laughs> property. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mona. That was good. Mona, Valentine's Day is coming. I know. Remember, Mona. Remember? Oh, yes. oh God. Um, the Parks and Rec Department, uh, specifically the has, director, has, has a lot of stuff. Has, <laughs> has surplus 15, stuff. 15 broken chairs um, that uh, no one like is able um, I'm glad and kept would like them to dispose of them. All this time. Yeah. Um, so the board needs to declare them as surplus so that we can uh, trash them. I can I can vouch that the newer the new chairs are nice I, and the old chairs were really tough. <laughs> I, I it just blows my mind that you have to get our approval <laughs> <laughs> to, to get rid of but fifteen chairs. I move to deem the fifteen <laughs> chairs identified <laughs> in Mr. Galoni's memorandum Second. as surplus items. Second, we're ready to go. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. I think Ford actually wanted to take one home, but I'm not sure. Oh, man. <laughs> we sat in those broken chairs two years ago. And it there's, was there's, there's, they haven't degrees. improved with age. <laughs> For three hours on a Sunday before town meeting. That was just awful. Yes, okay. So the next out item is just housekeeping, right? In it's a sense. Just housekeeping. Yep, right. now that we have Kate on board, uh, right. she and Mona have been going through the appointment <laughs> list to look for opportunities for consolidation as well as. Um, committees that have uh, both vacancies as well as expired appointments, um, one being um, our, our town council. All right, so then I move to appoint Anderson Creer as Dover's town council for a term expiring June 30th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, on time, Rob. Right, so it's just. Um, Selectman's updates. I really do not have a very um, a, an update on the rail trail. Uh, Chris and I are going to um, have a meeting with um, town town council, and then next meeting on the twenty eighth, we'll have um, something to report. Okay. 
But I mean, it's the same, but the friends are still. I, I mean, we're all trying. It's not. Working. It's not easy, and so we're trying to find. You know, they're they're working on it. We're working on it, and we mm -hmm. may or may not find a path forward. Okay. Are there are there any other initiatives that anybody wants to talk about? Well, uh, TAB meets tomorrow. I mean, next week. Okay. Um, we covered most of what TAB has accomplished by signing off on those. Right. Right. Uh, so that's projects. So, so that's, that's huge. Um, um, and we're, you know, I, uh, in terms of the Carroll Building Project, you know, we're going down the, uh, I'm assuming we'll soon go into, from the RFQ into the select uh, potential candidates phase, and that's scheduled to take place in February. And I thought that, um, if I remember right, you have to help me out here, I think that uh, we were looking for early March to try to get that mm -hmm. resolved. Yeah, right. that sounds right. Just two items for me, Madam Chair. Uh, one, obviously, we discuss Hale will be here next at our next meeting. Number two great. was, did we have, did, was there an actual accepted, um, uh, an, an accepted offer on a property on Farm Street that held a conservation restriction where we had a right of first refusal? We were going to have. There was a. There was some talk, not at our last meeting, but the meeting before that. That came up as a subject item really, in open space. Yeah. Um, so there is a potential um, 61A chapter land property, <coughs> excuse me, property that may be going on the market, but we have not received the official documentation from the seller's attorney so indicating as such. Yeah. Um, so it's still um, it's still open at this point. Got it. But of course, the board of selectmen will be notified the day of. When we receive it, if we receive it, small town of Dover, things travel faster than the internet. They certainly do sometimes. They so certainly so do. If you and the only to. thing that I would, I would, as a future meeting, I would really like to talk about the sustainability council idea. If we can uh, set aside some, uh, so set aside some time, um, and it'd be good to have some of the people who, like who have been major players in the either on the uh, transfer station or on the. Uh, solar panel stuff to sort of cons consider this because as a, as a sort of as I've been discussing with various and sundry people it it, um, it sort of seems to make sense to many to have something that looks like the open space committee which is a committee formed by other members mm -hmm. of other interested committees uh, as a way of providing a, 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 fo a locus and a focus yeah. for broader issues than just solar you know, as I've mentioned before, I'm, I'm not sure what we get that we're not well, getting that, now. that's so why we have a discussion. Have a discussion. Mm -hmm. um, one, just one other reminder, subject to the, the solar, you reminded me of that, um, Bob, is that Monday the 10th, there is an open hearing for the cell tower. Um, there's going to be a planning board, I'm sorry, a planning board hearing for some tower, Ch uh, the potential change in their rate structure. That's a planning board item. So I got just got a notification of that today. Hmm. So I would like Monday to... Monday coming? Sorry. I'm sorry? It's coming Monday. This coming Monday. At, at, in planning board downstairs. Okay. And then what do they meet? 10? No, they meet at 7 p.m. Oh, I have yeah. 7 p.m. The one... I'd like to commend everybody for finally getting the water main fixed in front of us, so the hydrant. That was a little bit of an ordeal. I think everything that could go wrong went wrong. <laughs> and But I saw them on Friday night fixing yeah. it. So, you know, every, everybody, I, you know, worked worked late and now it's even forgotten. Yeah, but thank you. Yeah, team yeah, did a great job. Yeah, yeah, they did do a good job. Water main issue and two light posts in the same block. Right? They did some damage. They did some damage. Did some damage. And was one driver or was it an accident? Wow. Okay. Hmm. Wow. 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 Well, well done, Craig and Chief. Everybody involved. And Carl and Carl Chris. And Carl and, and Chris. And, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people involved. Yeah, and a lot the Charles River School. And, you know, it was a community <laughs> event. It was an event. Yeah. 
<laughs> there was, and it was cold, and there were so many people standing outside. Right. Well, yeah, Friday, on, on Friday, Friday night, night Friday right? Night cold. They touched a lot of bases. Right. Well, driver. it's it's just one of those things where you could never have expected so much to go wrong, in just everything. No, you're wrong. right. Murphy's law. Right. So. Okay. It's all on our plate. Yep, now we, go, now we go to the people who actually do the work. Right. Not those that pretend to do the work. <laughs> um, so on the town administrator updates, maybe I'll, I'll start with the water piece and to thank you for the recognition of Craig and Carl and the crew who did a great job and spent a lot of uh, quality time together. Quality time <laughs> together. <laughs> maybe coffee. Uh, tearing, up, tearing up the road. Um, you know, one of the things that um, didn't necessarily remind us, but brought back to the top of the list um, was that you know the town has essentially a liability under the streets here in the town center, right. in that we own the water infrastructure, um, but we do not provide the service of the water. So Colonial Water is using our infrastructure uh, to uh, distribute water. They pay us a fee and they shave off of the rates for us. Um, but there's no money that's set aside for water main repairs. What was the last time they were looked at? For regular maintenance schedules. Right. Um, and so, again, it's a big liability. Um, so I have um, I've had a conversation with the chair of the Water Resources um, Committee um, to tee that up to the group to see if they had a, just a general recommendation kind of as it relates to water resources more generally in the town you know, kind of what their thoughts are about uh, water resources and any recommendations in that area. Um, but as uh, as the as the um, as the board of selectmen holds the contract with Colonial Water to use that infrastructure, and that contract is up for renewal at the end of this fiscal year, uh, you know, these things kind of go hand in hand if we want to revisit um, what that looks like, either in terms of you know compensation and things like that. But it's just, that's all to say that it's something that we should be looking mm -hmm. at, and we'll start to look at and dialogue with the board over the next few months. Oh, yeah, no, take it to that. I mean, just making us aware. Come and can we, us. you know, is there a company we can hire that could go in and look at the infrastructure and give us a sense of what may be coming down the pike? You know, similar to what we're doing with all the other buildings, it would be good to know. So that's a great point. There are, and that was okay. you know, essentially one of the charges uh, to the Water Resources Committee. Is, you know, we, we have some Weston and Sampson's out there, but you know, okay. who has the town they've worked in the past or that you know of, that might be a good, as you know, there are a lot of good professionals on right. that group that might have a good sense right. to help with that. Right. So is this on their agenda for next Wednesday? It is. So Weston and Sampson actually does a, quite a bit of school, uh, work for the region because they have a wastewater treatment plant. And prior to bringing Weston and Samson in, we could never meet the permit requirements. Mm -hmm. So they do have a good relationship, and That's you know so. it runs more smoothly. It's less expensive. Preventative maintenance is being done. This is like a pipeline company. Right? We're like a pipeline company. We have we have the pipes, and we're putting like into somebody else's mm -hmm. product. Use it. Yeah. Maybe we can run. Um, Copper cable through the water pipes. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just a thought. A few other um, quick updates for the board. Um, so I can spring it. Referenced uh, a few of the things in the tab. Um, a couple of things I just wanted to highlight for the board and the folks here this evening. Some of the immediate things that uh, both the tab and then staff have been looking at are some connectivity issues um, as it relates to broadband, uh, essentially hardwired network as well as Wi-Fi um, in both the Carroll Community Center uh, and the townhouse. Um, so our IT staff has been working um, with, uh, with a member of the TAB who's got extensive experience in hands-on networking and network mm -hmm. troubleshooting and they've kind of been um, assessing both the or two buildings that I just mentioned to come up with a plan on addressing those. And um, I had a preliminary check-in with them today, and it looks like there are some lightweight solutions that we can employ to help, you know, make sure that people can get Wi-Fi in the building when they're in their building, as well as ensure that people uh, have the appropriate speeds on their computers. 
Um, so it's just that thing that I wanted to highlight. Like the repeater technology has gotten That's a right. lot better. That's right. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, because I I don't know when it came to be, but it really it really helps. Yeah. Because we have a couple of boosters in our house. Yeah, yeah we do too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we we had rooms where you couldn't really get yep. Wi-Fi. Yep. And and at work we we have a number of them because we just found the volume. Of people prefer to be on Wi-Fi than right. hard hard connect. Right. Yep. And it looks like th they've stabilized the website again. The website looks like it's stabilized. I checked an hour before coming in here, um, so I can say that. So, but again, you know, and I knock on wood on that thing until uh, until we retire it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other piece. Um, we could have a ceremony. We, it's not a bad <laughs> idea. We should put that on the sometime. We can put it on the <laughs> uh, As it relates to you know all things sustainability from an IT standpoint, um, on at the next board meeting there'll be a request for the board to authorize the town to request a .gov domain address um, for our website and for our emails, so things will move from doverma.org to doverma. Gov. Um, there are some security concerns related to dot orgs. Dot govs are just generally more professional okay. and dedicated to government organizations. And the third piece is there has been some some changes in ownership. the federal government and ownership related to dot um, org owners, which could increase significantly the cost of owning those domains moving mm -hmm. forward. So, given that we're moving forward with the website at this point. It made sense to go and start to start that request to transfer things over. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. The dot org would still exist in the background, so we right. can redirect for people that still right. have it, but it will help us get to the dot right. or dot gov, excuse me. Um, and then the third piece uh, that I just wanted to build on Select and Spring, it's um, uh, mentioned about um, training. Our IT coordinator has uh, shared with me today a really robust um, G Suite training um, for staff here in town. Um, and so it's all focused about around emails, um, calendar usage, as well as um, document sharing on oh, that's Google great. Drive. Right. Um, so she's coordinating, and I want to thank the, um, the library trustees and the library director. We're going to get about 15 laptops in the great hall and have kind of concurrent sessions. Oh, that's um, where great. Where staff come in and out, um, and she's also put together really robust documentation so that you get your hands-on training in the class and then you've got a nice training document, both physical and electronically, that you can reference if you run into trouble or have a question later on down the road, which will help, um, which will be a great thing for staff, something that they need, as well as help reduce the number of requests that our sole IT staff gets as it relates to things like this, um, which is good. That's, I mean, you know, that was another one of the initiatives training. Give, give, give people the tools they need to get their job done. And the done. support. The tools right. and the support. Right. Yeah. And you can always learn something new. I mean, even if you know how to do something, when you go to these classes, sometimes you learn the right way how to do it. Yeah. Or right. it's a it's shortcut just, that you know, Right, or a shortcut, right. takes you a whole lot less time right, than right. the way you were doing it. Right. But it's often, you know, I, I've been dealing with technology for most of my career. And it's, if you don't get the training, sustained training and support, right, all the other stuff right, is just wasted. So um, just the other thing I was thinking about, that, that uh, we, you know, we have a lot on our plate. And, and so not just us, but I mean the town in general as we go into 20 fiscal year 2021. Um, and they always worry about having enough money in the in the budget to to basically bring on board like we have this this uh, this firm today for the for the uh, for the engage for the website implementation um, ways to, to make sure we have enough money to handle transitional peaks in staffing needs. Um, I mean, one of the reasons why we went to the town meeting last May and asked for the for the technology budget was so that we could handle we have the money to do this kind of stuff. And I know there are other areas that are equally impacted, not necessarily areas that report directly t to the board, who are also struggling with sort of peak workload. I just wonder if there's any, if there's ways that we can handle that. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah. would that conversation be part of the budget review when you send that, to, when we do it on the 28th? Yeah, it could be, yeah. Yeah, it could be part of the budget review. Uh, just know, a couple, because yeah. sitting on Warren, I've heard. Yeah. Right. You know, one thing that comes to mind is, you know, as it relates to the technology article, you know, you set up something like that for other efforts, um, and you know, you fund it with free cash, uh, which is a one-time fund that is available. Right. It, doesn't hit, for it doesn't hit the taxpayer, right? It's for right. one. It's, that's really what it's for, right? A one-time funding source for a one-time right. effort. You know, one of the things that um, you know, potentially we could discuss now at the budget uh, meeting is, you know, we've been doing. As like in spring it indicated, you know, so much work here kind of building out this foundation and level setting things, um, specifically as it relates to some of our you know evaluations, certainly in IT, but how the town is organized and structured. And so what we could do is we could set aside a, you know an article for um, like organizational assessments, right, to allow us to kind of continue to build. So we haven't uh, formally talked about you know, our efforts um, on developing a DPW department, but they're underway and it's kind of a preliminary phase. But, you know, that's just an initial phase, right? I mean, there's a more mature phase. Sure. And I think having those, those funds available to maybe just contract with someone to help, what does a robust Department of Public Works right. look like in this community to help us get that work done could be a good thing. Right. Well, I think, I think we're really seeing advantage, you know, by bringing that consultant in from the Collins Center yeah. to work with us on the financial mm -hmm. policies, even though I, I did challenge him a little bit. But you should be, I you think should I be stood up to my challenge. <laughs> but it was a really, you know, it was a really good meeting, you know, and it's, it's nice to get, it's right, it's nice to get actual benchmarks, you know, yes. other towns get... It's not anecdotal anymore. It's this what other towns right. are doing. And so it, it's nice. It, it's nice to have the funds to to do that, because it makes the task much easier, it more does. efficient, and then you can focus on, you know, having those policies in place and implementing them, which will then save you money in the long mm -hmm. run. And it complements some of the work that Chris has been doing in looking at how to restructure the how we've been siloed and better use of the staff that we have. So they, these things are all. No. So they will right. lock together here as we go forward. Um, so the only other real quick things, um, um, Selectman Jeffries talked about Hale, uh, Selectman Springer talked about Carroll, um, the OPM RFQ closes on Wednesday. Um, we had seven firms, we had a site visit as part of the application hmm. process. It wasn't mandatory, it was optional, um, but we had seven firms come and actually visit oh, the site. That's, um, that's a good turnout. Um, so for the chair of the, you know, the committee and myself. Not yet. Um, yeah. Uh, so for the the, uh, the self-appointed chair. <laughs> the dedicated committee member. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I uh, had a nice uh, site visit with, uh, with those firms, which really great. The passionate. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, yes. And incredibly, then, uh, incredibly passionate. We wrapped up initial round of interviews for the municipal project manager with a panel of staff um, this week. Um, and we'll be moving on, reaching out um, to uh, members of TAB and some of the other community members. Camille? Camille. Your gloves. Um, to continue the, uh, the assessment process. Um, good. So I, you know, I'm looking positive. I should say yep. it, looks very, it looks very good. Excellent. Uh, it looks very good, and uh, all goes well. I imagine we'll have someone here mid-March as possible. St. Patty's Day. If that's the date, they have to bring beer. There we go. <laughs> no green donuts. That's a... No donuts. Okay, add that to the list of questions for the next round. Do you like green donuts? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it for, uh, for the points this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so now we will move to the consent agenda. And we will vote to accept and expend a gift to the Council on Aging for Rehab Associates. We will approve special licenses for February 22nd and March 15th. Notice there isn't one for February 14th. Mm. Approve open session meeting minutes for November 6th, 21st, December 4th, 19th, and January 9th. Well, that catches us up. Right. Yes. No, no, what? okay, so the 29th. Yeah, one more, only one now. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do I have a motion to approve all the items on the consent agenda? So moved. So moved. All right. 
All in favor? Aye. Great. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, 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 just a, a thank you and a shout out to the to this family from Rehab Associates for their gift to the Council on Aging. Yeah, thank you. That's um, a good. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Gil and Jerry and family have been very supportive for a long time of our Council on Aging. Gil, both Gil and Jerry put a lot of time in, and, and a special thank you to them for their generosity. Yep. Thank you for the reminder. So without, there are no other items on the agenda or comments. I move to adjourn this meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night.